From a distance, it looks just like an ordinary combine, but take a real close look. This is the revolutionary bi-rotor combine, a rotor inside a rotor for threshing. A joystick for steering, tracks for power and flotation, 50% fewer moving parts than conventional combines. Nobody rotates the thrashing grate in the machine. They are held stationary and they thrash, the cylinder thrashes the material up against that grate that's there. And uh, this one here, of course, we rotate. That's where the main difference is. By rotating this, we get a lot more efficiency of separation and thrashing occurring here in the real short distance. This started out as a farm shop invention, but in 17 years, it's grown into an engineering masterpiece, a mechanical marvel on the verge of being mass produced. The Birotor Combine is the brainchild of Mark Underwood and Ralph Lagergren, Kansas farmers and very creative cousins. Their invention process began in 1978, and two years later, there were ideas and patents. Then, the work got serious with lab testing at Kansas State in 1989 and 90. Results showed they could increase grain separation and harvesting efficiency from the 72% done by conventional rotors to more than 95% with the bi-rotor. Better yet, the rotor needed only to be four feet long, less than half the length of today's machines. The concave was designed with a large aperture opening and coned down to a smaller separation area. Veins were used to guide the crop through. By rotating the concave the same direction as the cylinder, but at a slower speed, the grain could be separated with minimal losses and damage. And the concave didn't need adjustments or change-outs for use in different crops. The bi-rotor was retrofitted into an existing combine for two years of testing. And like the lab tests, in-field results were extremely positive. Here's Mark Underwood's comments as he drove the first test machine. Well, if you go back five, six years ago, I wouldn't have never thought I'd be sitting on top of it and watching it operate. And it is, it is a good feeling. A prototype was built in 1993 by a team of nine men working just over six months. The new machine was field tested in corn, soybeans, and wheat. And again, the results were exceptional. Clean grain and return grain system are in one housing to reduce parts and maximize space. A paddle system on loader empties the 400 bushel tank quickly and with less grain damage than auger systems. The lateral distributor controls grain flow to the sieves for separation. Inside hill conditions, the distributor elevates grain to the uphill side to maximize cleaning and reduce field loss. And here's another innovative design feature. The threshing system is one module that's easily removed. This process here, of course, is, is not even seen in today's machines. I mean, this is totally new. They cannot remove the threshing chamber out of the, out of the uh, mobile unit. Here we've getting it down to a 15, 20 minute process. We can, we can unbolt eight bolts on the faceplate, unhook one drive. We can set uh, the feeder house down and back the machine away and leave the entire inside of the threshing, the threshing uh, design outside the machine. That opens up an area that you could then pull in to a herbicide tank, planter unit, or a spray unit. Now the track system offers easy maneuverability and better flotation than conventional tires. Road speeds are more than 25 miles an hour. In 1994 field testing, the bi-rotor easily handled irrigated wheat yields that exceeded 125 bushels per acre. Heavy stands of irrigated milo and high-yielding corn that went more than 200 bushels an acre. Farmers throughout the country have been impressed with all aspects of the bi-rotor. What's next, you might ask? Well, refinement, continued testing, and hopefully an arrangement to have the bi-rotor mass-produced by 1997. By then, 
The new combine will have been nearly 20 years in the making, and inventors Mark Underwood, Ralph Lagergren, and their support team will have truly earned their title of Dream Reapers.